So speaking of the ecosystem, let's talk about the technology stack of this evolving ecosystem of alternative data. Um, obviously, we have an industry where data is in the name, right? So, you know, you're dealing with technology, but, you know, in my personal experience working in the industry, um, there has, it started off being not a very tech savvy, tech uh, oriented industry, but that has dramatically changed over time as some of the newer tools and techniques are becoming available to deal with the spe specifically unstructured data, um, such as transaction data. Um, let's talk about some of the um, modern tools and techniques that are available to both investors and intermediaries um, when working specifically with unstructured, raw, alternative data sets. Eli, you want to um, Yeah, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about uh, the tech stack. Um, and this ties to our first question about um, whether the data has become more accessible today via the, the sheer amount of tools that exist. And if you've um, heard the, the second or the third panel today with the folks from AWS and from Microsoft and from uh, IBM, uh, the, the sheer number of Lego pieces that we have today uh, allows you practically to get an access to pretty much any data set given that you, you want to experiment and, and try, um, the only thing that stands between you and um, accessing the data is, is understanding of the new concepts uh, in the technology world. And this is something that is uh, slightly, it actually changed radically over the past 25 years. So, so the, the entire stack has changed into let's keep the data at rest where it resides. Let's not move large volumes of data, it's expensive. Um, petabytes of data should not be moved, but rather uh, separate the, uh, the storage and the compute concepts. Like separation of the storage and the compute is the quintessential paradigm that, that changed in the last 15 years. Um, so if the data resides um, in some data center, essentially, whether you call it cloud or on-prem, on uh, you bring your compute with you. That, that means your, your computes, your CPU can connect over the network to the place where data resides. You can all of a sudden um, bring your compute, work on your data, extract the value that you need, but leave that data uh, sitting there. You don't need to shuffle the petabytes of data from place A to place B. There is nothing proprietary in that data until you make it proprietary with your insights. Now, these insights are by, by design are much smaller, which you can store locally, or you can, um, uh, you can then further enhance in, in, your, in your particular uh, location. In terms of tools, um, I'll, I'll use AWS terminology, but uh, I will not discriminate uh, Azure or, or Google in that respect. Um, stuff like distributed SQL engines like Athena, for example, uh, they're coming up with uh, Jupyter Notebooks today that you can, with one line of code, access the data and start working it. If you know a little bit of Python or if you know a little bit of SQL, you can start querying the data immediately, which means... Uh, you're dropping all these paper cuts. So, you know, the death by southern paper cuts. How do I do this? How do I do that? Today's provider, today's ecosystem, either when, within AWS or, you know, technologies like Spark, it's a distributed, uh, distributed um, data engine, right? Processing engine. Uh, Spark, with a little bit of uh, understanding of what's the object storage, like S3, gets you up and, up and running in days, not in weeks, not in months, and you can actually launch it, everything you don't really need, uh, powerful computers. It's all abstracted away from you. So that's kind of the way I see um, the ecosystem uh, working right. today. 